you giving it away for free. I don't I don't respect that kind of wholeness. I'm sorry, y'all. Y'all can call me. Y'all always be like, nay, you always talk about selling pussy. Well, the niggas always talk about pimping. Hello there, Bellas. If you have not already done so, please remember to like, share to Facebook, and subscribe because it is so important to our success here on the YouTube. And if you are not already a part of our book club, please remember to hit the Patreon link below and or the join button here on the YouTube and for a small monthly fee of five dollars you babies yes you can be privy to all the shenanigans before the youtube gets it if the youtube gets it now let's talk about etta james and david ritz rage to survive uh this is either 16 17 or 18 i'm not sure so where we left off okay uh etta james dumped the pimp okay Met up with Marvy Pooh. Marvy Pooh, you know, in his uh, lostness, that's the best way for me to say it, has married uh, one of the Gordy sisters, okay? Eddie James feels like uh, the reason why Marvy Pooh got with one of the Gordy sisters was because they could replace his mother because uh, she felt like. Marvin Gaye needed to be mothered, okay? And what better the person to do it than a Gordy sister? Because she met up with Marvy Pooh, and Marvy Pooh's now wife is like 16 or 17 years his senior, she came up with the grand idea, ooh, maybe I should be running around town with a older man. She found one, this old gangster named Red Diller. From Harlem. Apollo Faye is one of my favorite characters. Her real name is Faye Pridgen. Faye was a girlfriend who did and said some of the things I wanted to say or do, except I lacked the guts. Faye had nothing to hide. Her first kid was from Willie John, and she was proud of it. She was pretty and perky and full of so much sexy spunk, no man could resist her. She was thin-framed and big-breasted and wore spike heels. Faye had a mystic side to her. She was psychic. Let me tell you what she was psychic about, the dick, okay? That's a concern to me. You psychic about dick? I mean, we all got this power, okay? What she would do, you know, when her and Etta was out together, what they would do is, you know, they looking around, Etta looking for, you know, her piece of man change, okay? Faye looking for her a piece of man change, okay? And what happens is she would look at the man's crotch and be like, ooh, I want some of him. Ooh, he, like he's a good time. Girl, that's it. You hunching just to say you hunched? What kind of a new thought is that? What kind of new tricking is that, girl? You giving it away for free. I don't, I don't respect that kind of wholeness. I'm sorry, y'all. Y'all can call me. Y'all always be like, nay, you always talk about selling pussy. Well, the niggas always talk about pimping. I remember her spotting a beautiful boy who couldn't have been older than 15. You wouldn't, I said. Just watch me. Girl, you know they arresting teachers for that. Faye also invented the term repertoire from her own club. Famous among her friends of the men she considered skilled lovers. She wasn't just speculating. Faye had hands-on experience. 
I loved listening to her roll call. Willie John is in the repertoire, she'd say. And Carl Gardner of the Drifners put Fathead Newman, Ray Charles, Sex Man in there. Fathead with his beautiful, super thick brush mustache and naturally Jackie Wilson. Honey, all the Midnighters belonged in the repertoire. And later on, I let Otis Redding on in. Johnny Guitar Watson was dead off in the re repertoire. And Nate Nelson of the Flamingos was a character member. Brooke Benton is in there along with Charles Fiz Pfizer of the Olympics. And as far as Wilson Pickett goes, I'd have to call him Mr. Repertoire. The Den Mother, the one soul sister no soul brother could pass up. She was always ready for the D, okay? And Etta James is like, ooh, I wish I could. I wish I could. You know what? I uh, Would I be friend, Faye? Would I be? I, uh, you know why I wouldn't be friend, Faye? Because I would think in my heart, you probably thinking that I'm a hoe and I might get down like that, you know, because they always do that. Be like, oh, you know, birds of a feather flock together. But I've hung out with some hoes before, you know, and I've had some situations where a dude would come up to me and be like, you coming too? No, I don't know you, nigga. I'm not going with you to no damn hotel. And one of the girls was like, come on, Nay, come go with us. For what? For what? I'm not about to do what y'all about to do. Y'all whole shit, I'm cute. I don't know what the fuck y'all got going on. I ain't got to do with that. When I got back to New York from Detroit and dumped Fat Jack's brother, Willie. It was Faye who introduced me to Red Dillon. Red was a famous gangster with a Robin Hood of reputation. He was known as a cat who looked out for the poor folks. He was also known for some bloody shootouts with Bumpy Johnson. The Black Hood who fought for Harlem when Dutch Schultz gave it up. I liked Red. We weren't stone in love with each other, but for a while, we were a good couple. Red had light skin, nice hazel eyes, and short salt and pepper hair. Ooh, sounds so sassy, sounds so sassy. The year I went with him wasn't his best. He had legal problems involving a murder rap and was always running off the court. I was nothing more than a mild distraction, okay? While I was going with Red, Apollo Faye had a fling with C.B. Atkins, then married to Sarah Vaughn. C.B. had a fleet of cabs in Chicago and was tight with Muhammad Ali. C.B. also had something of an underworld reputation as a wild gambler. My reputation wasn't much better. I was still into my platinum hair, lips red and fire slim, line peg dress period. My neckline was so low and my breast pinched together so tight that if you breathe too hard on me, they might pop out in your face. See, I don't know. She must got regular size titties because being as though I am a size uh, H now, there's no way I would want to take these boobs and like... Uh, uh, it was the winter time and we were on our way to the motel on 159th Street. The first motel built in Harlem when CB suggested that Faye, me, and Red spend the week with him at the beautiful home he and Sir Vaughn had just built in Inglewood Cliff. Sir was in Europe. I felt bad. I liked Sir considering that she was one of the greatest singers in the world. But damned if I didn't go alone. Etta James, you dirty bitch, you. You dirty bitch, you. Let me tell you what she did, okay? So you know her and Faye is Judy's, okay? You know, she loves and admires Sir Vaughn, okay? The dude, her husband, CB, you know, Richie CB, you know, he don't need Sir Vaughn or her money because he got his own cab fleet. Now, I don't know if Sir Vaughn gave him the front money for the cab fleet, but I'm just saying, okay? So her... Atta James, her boo, Red, and um, Hoochie Coochie. What's her name? Hoochie Coochie. Hoochie. What's her name? Apollo Faye. You know, I wonder why they call her Apollo Faye. Faye. Her, her dude and Apollo Faye make their way over to Sir Vaughn's husband's house. Okay? Atta James know it ain't right, but she don't care. She want to do what she want to do. And I want to enjoy 
you know, the perks of being around, you know, CB and maybe all his drugs if he got it. I felt guilty, but I didn't believe guilt was a part of Faye's makeup. Understand also that Faye was no hooker. She could have made millions, but she did what she did because she loved making love to men. That, that, that is dumb. That is dumb. That is super dumb. Because she loved to have sex, she just did it just for free. What? Do you know how many women out here are super mega ultra rich because they let, okay, I like the hunch, let me put it on camera. Okay, I like the hunch, let me put this in the picture so I can sell it on back page. Okay, what the hell? Or grinder. You know what I'm saying? I know you can't tell me they ain't have no grinder type back page type thing. Okay, I mean, they had the classified section. You know, that is the craziest shit to me. You fuck just because you want to, because you love the hunch. What is that? Straight up, she let a man know what he was going to get. He didn't have to buy her drinks or dinner. Girl, he ain't had to buy you dinner? Oh my God, come on. You ain't even make the nigga buy you a steak. They was the least hypocritical. We ran close together until many years later. I got nervous about Faye's designs on my teenage son. Told you. Told you. When that shit bites you in the ass, you should have known that when you knew that she was about to hunch that 15-year-old boy, girl. My God, Edda, my God. Ooh, you got to keep a bitch like that away, okay? CB, but by the way, wound up losing all of Sir's money. After Sir's divorced him, he managed and married Esther Phillips. Now all three are long gone. Red went off to prison where years later he died. About the same time he left for jail, so did John Lewis. This was 1964. John's departure was a tremendous blow. <laughs> already done so please remember to like share to facebook and subscribe because it is so important to our success here on the youtube and if you are not already a part of our book club please remember to hit the patreon link below and or the join button to be privy to all the shenanigans before the youtube gets remember this the same people that you meet on the way up will always be the same people that you meet on the way down, my naysayers, my patron loves you babies. Have a good one.